Um, and welcome to our first webinar uh, conducted by Pasido Technologies. Uh, my name is Praveen, and uh, I'm very excited today to be your facilitator um, for, for the entire panel and the students who are attending the session. Um, basically, I'll just go with my introduction. Uh, I have been with uh, this industry for about 14 years now, uh, predominantly working in the biostats and programming space. Um, I have conducted many clinical trials. I've been part of the clinical trials, uh, conducted many analysis of clinical trial data, starting from collection to submission. Uh, I'm very proud of uh, being part of one of the submissions of a small company way back in 2012, where uh, it changed the fortune of that particular company, very small one, where I was you know, part of the submission group. Uh, uh, I'm so uh, proud of being part of that. And also, you know, a few years back, I was, I led the submission efforts of the CAR-T, which is a cell and gene uh, therapy, first cell and gene therapy approval uh, from Novartis. And I'm also very proud of, you know, conducting that analysis and submission. Um, and I'm very passionate about helping individuals like you all uh, achieve you know your learning and uh, any 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 developmental goals that you have within this space that I am in. So joining me today are uh, esteemed panel members who bring a wealth of knowledge, uh, great experience, uh, and we'll be sharing with you all today. Uh, specifically, they're also in the field of biostatistics and programming within the pharmaceutical industry uh, in the U.S. Uh, we have Mr. Sunil Gupta, uh, we have uh, Santosh, we have uh, Kalyan, we have uh, Shiva with me, and also uh, we have Naresh from India. There is another panel member who is missing today due to personal reasons. Uh, her name is Deepika, and she's an R expert. Uh, I'll quickly uh, let the uh, panel members introduce themselves, but, you know, basically today we are here to discuss you know, the exciting and, you know, rapidly growing opportunities in the pharmaceutical industry in India uh, within uh, where we will be focusing on the field of biostatistics and programming. Uh, as many of you may know, India has emerged a major player in the global pharmaceutical market um, and the demand for skilled professionals in this space is is, is, is on the rise uh, um, at exponential levels. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will quickly go. Uh, let why don't we quickly start with uh, a, a brief introduction of the panel, uh, Mr. Sunil? Why don't you, you know, I let you speak. Sure. Thank you, Pravin, for uh, inviting me and Shiva to uh, be on this panel. Um, I'm very happy to be here and share my knowledge experience. As Pravin mentioned, I think that uh, one of the things that Brought, brought me into this field is, is a strong passion uh, to apply my you know, technical programming, analytical skills in this uh, clinical trials field. Um, <clears throat> I've been also in this pharmaceutical industry for close to three decades now. Before that, I was in the medical device field. And there's a sense of, you know, um, feeling feeling good about what you're what you're doing, helping people, uh, whether it's for medical devices, making sure that the devices or pharmaceuticals, you know, clinical trials uh, meet its objective as well as being uh, you know, safety. And so there's a very uh, intense process about it. And I'd like to, uh, you know, I'm, I appreciate being on this panel to help uh, share my knowledge experience, to help uh, you know, new graduates getting into this field and also you know, doing well in this field. So, you know, thanks for including me. I, uh, in Southern California, I'm also uh, been in major uh, submissions on CRO side, as well as on the sponsor side um, and uh, very much uh, hands-on. Uh, so I think it's very uh, rewarding to stay, stay in touch really close with the data. So thanks for having me part of this and looking forward to, you know, answering your questions that you may have. Thank you, Sunil. Great to have you. And also, I think I'll have to add, uh, Sunil is an author of uh, quite a few books uh, uh, and uh, 
uh, and also he uh, is the founder of SaaS Savvy and uh, our guru, which he's, I think he's going to talk about a little bit uh, uh, soon. But uh, yeah, I think I think uh, I, I see I see uh, Santosh next uh, on my uh, left. Uh, so why don't you start, Santosh? Sure. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yeah. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Pravin. Uh, so first of all, happy Republic Day, everyone. Uh, for folks good in India. Hope you're having a nice holiday time today. Uh, so coming to my introduction, my name is uh, Santosh Lingala. Um, so I've been in this industry uh, for a little more than 14 years now. So I work for uh, uh, multiple CROs and also work for various sponsors. You know, when I say sponsors, it's like pharmaceutical industries. And I have started my career basically as a statistical programmer. And then I eventually grew as a lead, leading the studies, for multiple therapeutic areas, supporting various pharmaceutical industries, you know, their clinical studies and had some successful submissions as well, in various therapeutic areas that includes oncology, cardiovascular, respiratory, and um, and also on the, on the virology side. So eventually I grew up and um, um, explored various, uh, you know, um, opportunities at various companies. And uh, right here, I'm here at um, maintaining standards in the current company, which is Gilead Sciences where I kind of see, um, oversee, maintain standards for Adam and also involved in submission process. And I work closely with uh, the study teams. So uh, that's where I am. And um, I reside in um, uh, Austin, Texas. Yeah. And so uh, happy, to and, help uh, and, uh, happy to answer any questions anybody has. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, to add on, me and uh, Santosh were uh, colleagues a while ago, 10 years back. Uh, so that's another thing to share. Yes. I see, I see Kalyan. Kalyan, why don't you start? Next. Hi, hi everyone. Um, thanks once again, uh, Praveen and uh, Shiva for providing this opportunity. So I'm Kalyan. Um, I have moved. Um, so what, what garnered my interest into moving into clinical trials is basically, formerly I was a scientist and the science kind of... Uh, um, where, where I've been involved predominantly with preclinical trials. So the science, the interest in science kind of brought me into this clinical field, uh, clinical trials field. So I've, uh, I've also been a consultant in the past. Uh, I started off as a consultant uh, for, uh, for many pharma companies. I worked as a contractor for quite a while. And then... Uh, off lately, like in my recent position, I'm working for the past uh, five to five and a half years. I've been working uh, in the pharma field as a full timer, um, and uh, I've been involved in multiple clinical trials from uh, from raw data designing uh, to submissions. So the complete end to end activities in a study from clinical mon uh, from clinical monitoring and all through the phase of the studies for different phases. Predominantly, I've been involved in phase three studies and uh, cardiovascular and renal metabolism has been my uh, uh, predominant phase of uh, uh, the therapeutic area of study that I've worked in. Um, my interests in clinical trials include like standards, uh, be it like raw data standards, um, SDTMs, uh, CDESC and ADAM standards, also, at, at my current organization, I'm also part of a therapeutic area standards development team, where we where we review from end to end uh, from the raw data standards, ADAM standards, SDTM, and also the TFL uh, standards that are required for safety, efficacy, uh, reporting towards um, clinical trials for different regulatory agencies all across the world. Um, um, and my other interest from standards also includes like digital health. Um, and my expertise also is involved in um, in trials out of the norm trials, like uh, real world evidence trials, trials employing digital health, uh, digital health devices, um, and uh, trials, uh, registry based trials, like re real world evidence trials, which are very complicated trials. So I've been fortunate enough to have worked on these trials from uh, from again from initiation to uh, to submission. So these have been my experiences. So I'm very well versed uh, in the study 
level activities from uh, from uh, from start from go to submission so that is my experience i'm uh, i would like to share my knowledge uh, that i've garnered over the years working for different companies and working on the submissions uh, with uh, uh, with the with the group over here thank you yep, that's about me and i'm great. i'm based in gaithersburg maryland great thank you thank you so much kalyan again uh, we both are colleagues and in, in the organization that we current i mean we, we bo both work for the same organization and also one thing to add is kalyan has been a key key player in developing uh, standards uh especially in the especially for the cardiovascular metabolism therapeutic group uh where we work and uh yeah i think i see shiva uh shiva why don't you quickly introduce yourself uh hi everyone uh happy uh republic day and uh myself is shiva uh i've been in this industry for more than like uh two decades uh so it's my passion about uh in this industry is initially started with the data management uh, so that's where i learned uh, like all like clinical data so once i fascinated about that like how the data looks and then i moved on to like uh, uh, programming side now basically i'm a uh, computer engineer and then programming is like easy to learn and but uh, that's a new language so it's uh, very easy to learn and then i started uh, working as a saas programmer so and also i'm very much uh, fascinated about uh, creating uh, like automation like uh, tools tool development kind of things and uh, uh, by using saas uh, so that where uh, i learned uh, most of the tools and uh, how we can uh, utilize in this industry and along with uh, this i worked almost like uh, end to end studies like 50 plus studies and uh, and also supported uh, 70 plus studies in very various uh, areas like including uh, data extraction and also uh, with uh, uh, sdm creations and also like uh, adam like anywhere like if it is any process improvement is needed so that's where i just give ideas like okay we, why can't we do in this way and something like that and also involved uh, various uh, tool development uh, to improvise the process so that way uh, we can uh, see how how we can do differently rather than regular uh, day to day activities so that's main uh, interest um, uh, along with uh, my uh, therapeutic experience like i worked on almost like oncology and uh, immunology studies um, uh, that's uh, all about me uh, so i'm very much uh, no like when i started initially back in india i know like how difficult to get first job so i tried almost uh, uh, what are the things is required uh, so why uh, what is the key things we should learn before uh, when we are searching we know like uh, only one or two positions will be there first thing they'll ask is experience so how to get a first experience is very difficult so that's why i wanted to help like uh, what are the key things we have to learn uh, if you want to search outside like uh, uh, as a fresher how you can improve that uh, what is uh, what exactly is it needed like how we can showcase yourself what you know uh, so you already know like something you some uh, gaps are there so if you make sure that that gaps are filled it's very easy to clear any interview it's uh, any fresher is not less than an experienced person so it's only the confident and then uh, those things are required so just wanted to help on that space uh, that's the reason just wanted to uh, help myself to whoever uh, needed yeah all you right great great thank you so much shiva i uh, two decades of experience i know you have been you know working on paper crf as well i uh, you started your yeah. days working with paper crf so um, and i know like you have tremendous knowledge beyond sas uh, using other utility tools um, I, i i think you have tasted every flavor of these anal analytical tools and uh, that would be great experience for you know the the, the students who want to set their foot uh, into this space G great shiva thank you so much yeah thank uh, you thanks for and uh, yeah uh, i'm 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 also you know i would like to also share that you know we're very delighted to announce that you know our our uh, uh, pesido technologies will soon be launching several cohorts 
uh, tailored to individual backgrounds and experiences, and we will be enrolling students into each cohort based on their qualifications and aspirations. Uh, and these cohorts will provide more targeted training and support to help students excel in their uh, uh, in their field. I mean, in this particular field, but in their in their in, in their areas of interest. And uh, we will we as our panelists will share their insights, experiences, uh, valuable uh, advices that we can help to understand. Uh, easily navigate you uh, uh, so you can navigate navigate through this uh, process uh, and get break into this industry uh, and how we will uh, how this entire concept of training will benefit you uh, we are very uh, you know uh, very much looking forward to you know taking this forward uh, in terms of a good discussion here uh, but before that i think i i, I missed uh, naresh naresh is uh, another panelist from india uh, who is also representing pesido naresh can you just quickly very quickly in the next 30 seconds introduce yourself please uh, hi uh, good morning to all and uh, good evening first uh, firstly i would like to um... I uh, wish all the uh, candidates from India and abroad a like, happy Republic Day. So just like uh, I've been into this industry for the past eight years, I'm currently working with uh, AstraZeneca Galaxy on a few rare diseases related analysis uh, studies. So um, uh, that's it for now. Uh, I'll share more things later. Uh, thank you, Pravin. Great, great, Naresh. Uh, Naresh has been a key member of for uh, all uh, all the coordinative activities that he's been helping us with this. Uh, and thank you so much, Naresh. I really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. And then uh, I think we'll quickly jump into a two-minute video and then we'll begin our conversation traction. So uh, we, we all want you to l listen to this. I don't know if, if you have already seen this, but it would be nice to you know uh, see this video. Shiva, why, why don't you start it? Are you a recent graduate ready to take on the corporate world? While the IT industry is a desirable career path, the competition for campus placements is fierce as only 5-10% to 10 are getting placed and the hunt for an IT job can be even challenging. But it's not just about finding a job. It's about finding a secure and stable future. With the recent economic downturn and the fear of layoffs happening at major IT companies, job security has been severely impacted. The IT industry may be alluring, but remember, it's just the tip of the iceberg. The market is vast and ever-changing, and the recent pandemic has clearly highlighted the importance of pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry which has seen significant growth in market capital over the last decades and has evolved as a major player in the job market owing to a rise in research and development spending due to the increase in chronic diseases and the demand for effective medicines to cure them. A lot of cash on the sidelines. Both corporates and private equity are still looking for great opportunities. On, on, for example, on the uh, R&D side and the pipeline side, there's a lot of great, uh, you know, capabilities in store for the industry. Uh, the reality is healthcare and life sciences tends to be one of those resilient industries that, that uh, the markets tend to go to. With the pharmaceutical and biotechnology sectors growth in the market and shortage of skilled professionals in clinical statistical analysis and programming, the opportunities are endless. Unlock your true potential in a high-demand, financially rewarding industry. Introducing Pasido. Your gateway to success in this resilient industry. Pasido specializes in providing corporate-level training in clinical statistical analysis and programming. And 100% placement assistance to launch your career in the pharmaceutical industry. At Pasido, our team of training experts boasts of highly skilled working professionals with over a decade of experience in the U.S. pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry. Our elite mentors will provide you with a complete holistic knowledge of clinical trial analytics, equipping you 
with the theoretical and practical skills needed to excel in the industry. The best part at Pasido is that you will be exposed to real-time industry projects, giving you hands-on experience and preparing you to excel in any client interview and making you job ready and increasing your chances of landing your desired job. Don't let your background be a barrier. Even engineering or non-pharma students can thrive in the pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry with the guidance of our experienced mentors at Pasido. Pasido welcomes you to unleash a great career and carve your own niche in pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry. Additionally, we offer training in other functions such as data management, clinical monitoring, quality assurance, EDC programming, pharmacovigilance, regulatory affairs, RWE programming. Don't miss out. Join us and secure your future now. Pasido. Well, thank you so much, Shiva, for that. So I'll quickly jump into you know uh, uh, you know direct question to Mr. Sunil. Uh, so uh, you have, I think somebody is speaking. Can you all mute yourself, please? Uh, so you know, Sunil, I know you've been here for several decades. Uh, you've seen every corner, uh, and we truly believe you know the market in India is pretty much growing with respect to you know moving, especially in our function, the recruitment part. You know, what do you see the next five to 10 years would be like? And, you know, what do you have to say to someone who is, you know, looking into this industry freshly out of college uh, and, you know, trying to find a job? Uh, somebody wants to break into the pharma biotech world. Uh, just, just quickly, you know, you want to talk about that? Sure. Well, first of all, I love the video. I think the video is very well uh, put together. Uh, I think it encompasses uh, many of the aspects that are are needed and and missing from what I've what I've seen. Um, you know, I want to just point out uh, you know a few things. Uh, I think the there has always been a, a continuous a shortage. Uh, I've seen that from from. From day one, basically, um, the shortage is because you know several things. Um, the industry is predominantly uh, need of SaaS programmers. SaaS programmers is a very you know niche uh, statistical programming language, but not only that, you know, focusing on accessing and understanding clinical data and then clinical trials, uh, and then of course later with the uh, requirements of CDIS. But uh, I think that uh, you know many of the things that are included uh, with this package of meeting, you know, uh, seeking out and trying to understand, you know, the process of finding out, uh, you know, opportunities that are that are there. Um, as men as Eva mentioned, you know, one of the things that uh, is ideal is is getting some type of, uh, you know, experience or internship. Uh, but there's other other ways that you can also learn and prove, you know, prove yourself. There's ways to get, you know, certification. Uh, I've always uh, encouraged people to go for the, you know, base or the advanced certification to distinguish yourself, but there's also the clinical trials uh, certification. Um, there's things that you can do to educate yourself uh, on, on CDIS. Um, I think that freshers need to, you know, ask, ask questions. The curiosity will help uh, enable you to really understand the reasons why you're doing these things. The reason why you need to be, you know, very knowledgeable about the clinical data, the, the you know, the, the quality of the data, the quality of the studies, uh, and then leveraging technology. So I think, you know, there's, there's many things that are available in the industry, more so now than, than ever before. You know, things like Fuse, uh, if you haven't heard of it, you should be very, very well, you know, connected with the things that are available uh, from Fuse um, that, um, you know, you have industries uh, that, that want to share. Uh, there's guidelines available. So there's many resources um, that you should be able to tap into and, and utilize. So I think um, freshers need to be in, in, in tune with that. And of course, reaching out and connecting with, with people on LinkedIn. I'm very happy you know, to connect with people on LinkedIn. And just like yourself, Pravin, there's others uh, like the panelists here that are very willing and um, you know, pro providing some assistance to, to freshers to get on board. So just, just a quick brief summary of how I think you know, uh, pressures can benefit from this type of process. 
great great thanks sunil uh, uh kalyan do you want do you want to you know maybe talk 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 about your perspective on this like how do you see i know you, uh, we have we have interviewed a lot of people in india uh, how do you see the growth uh, and um, the opportunities uh, and where we could help uh, especially uh, people who want to break into this this space yeah so um so basically i i mean i would resonate with sunil whatever he was saying that you know it, the curiosity is what um is is one of the learning aspects for anybody who's learning uh, any skills but i regarding the growth i would say yeah there's been like predominant growth um in the level of clinical trials that are being conducted in india for example if you if you seen a um a couple of years ago there was uh, i think shanta shanta biotech was one of the one of the companies that launched uh, shanitharon which was like an uh, i think it was like an for hepatitis b or a vaccine that was like uh, and that too it was launched for a very very reasonable price like even below than what you get in uh, us so there's a lot of potential for growth in india there's a lot of potential for science um in india um so i'm i'm sure many pharmaceutical companies will come up and there there going to be a lot of clinical trials that are uh, that where india is going to be one of the major components and which would require like some some people from india themselves to know what the uh what what the standards are what are the submission guidelines for indian related drug agencies so i think it's very important based on the kind of recruitment that currently we the companies are doing in india uh the interviews that are being conducted the placements that are being done it's very important for uh for the next set of uh, uh graduates to grow into this field like learn this field um one suggestion i would from my personal thing i would say is always in in any kind of in any kind of a art that or field or science that you're learning if you if you start to think about why then the how comes the why turns into the how and then the how goes into uh it, it rolls into larger portions of learning so always whatever that you're doing if you think at if you think as why why this field why why clinical trials is such a is a big thing in today why the healthcare is has be always been resilient enough to sustain itself through any kind of recessions or anything so from there if you keep on thinking um and the why will lead to how and then the how will lead to learning and and there is a lot of trials um like you know uh, and there is a lot of needs to get these medicines to patients as soon as possible so um i would definitely say there's a lot of potential for uh, um for clinical trials in india and the fresh yeah well, well said kalyan i think and it's not just for clinical trials happening in india i think there is a lot of things being outsourced from here yeah also and that, majority yeah. of the work is being shifted uh mm. and i think that would create a major chunk of you know opportunity right. uh, for people who want Employment to explore this space. yeah 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 uh, uh shiva you want to you know add uh, anything uh oh, how yeah, you see to add one you know, thing the, the... here uh, uh just uh, recently we know like a uh, lot of uh, companies are opening in india uh, you know like uh, um branches are uh, get opened in the south india basically initially we had only few companies like uh, on a on the major big company like gsk was uh, the major uh, pharma company was there like uh, nowadays now like a lot of other uh, big uh, joint companies are moving and opening their branches and uh, shifting all their programming because the india is uh, providing like a lot of engineers and all those things so they wanted to make use of the talent and uh, uh in that industry but the thing is that uh, they want the right candidate uh, like for that like what is required uh, they are looking for a specific uh, uh, technique like specific uh, uh, skill set uh, that is what uh, we are trying to uh, uh, introduce here and uh, so that way uh, they are ready to start immediate in the as soon as it opens if you know like uh, whatever their expectation is so you you will be like a first person to be get hired so 
uh, just uh, for that reason you, you may see like a lot of opportunities are coming and uh, there are uh, endless opportunities so as a fresher if you know something like in this area so it'll be good. i mean there is a misconception that uh, clinical side only like doctors and only biology students will come but uh, also the technical aspects are there are a lot of technical jobs this side like data management or in uh, programming side and there are a lot of uh, other opportunities for the other non uh, like non bio biochemistry bio students so uh, right. for the freshers so that's a great opportunity uh, in this side as well and one more thing i wanted to emphasize here is like uh, other unlike other technologies um, like uh, like sas and uh, this only this is is there for almost 20 years if you see uh, compared to other programming languages it every day it will keep changing every time like if you java or something like there is a new package has come but whereas in this side it's very it's like combination of a uh, very rare combination like you know the submissions and their standards and the programming that thing you learn here this way uh, this type of uh, jobs very like the secured that's what i want to uh, say uh, there is one more advantage in this side as if we are looking for this side yeah good point good point uh, shiva uh, santosh i would like to you know uh, give you uh, want to hear your perspective also but uh, in addition to that uh, i'd like to put another question to you and then we'll you know go with uh, uh, the, uh, the views from other people as well but you know uh, uh, apart from you know answering this question of how india market is uh, uh, you know exploring uh, you know what what other areas where uh, you see that you know one could branch out you know you start your career as a programmer but is it is it going to be like a hardcore programming that you could you need to do within the statistical uh, uh, biostatistics programming area what are the other areas that you could uh, what are the sub areas that you could branch out because like for example you have chosen to be uh, uh, you know leading the standards uh, aspect uh, within within your organization uh so you know what what are the requirements uh, one needs to have like uh, to branch out into these areas uh, can they start basically you know on day one can they start in this space uh, or they need to do some background uh, you know and acquire some initial uh, uh, what do you call experience uh, and also the team that you work in india your overall you know what, what do you have to say on this yeah uh, good question uh, pravin um so um when talking about uh, um standards you know so it's not something you can start right away as an experience but i would suggest uh, start with a statistical background you know understand um what we are doing in a study so it's more about the standards work more involves more about collaboration as well not just uh, uh, standardizing things like on the gtm or adam or the tfl side of things but understanding the study overall why we are doing that you now for what the purpose of it how it's impacting downstream uh, what we are reporting and it's not just involves you know um mapping things basically you know um it also goes beyond mapping going into the submission process understanding the regulatory requirements it's not just uh, not just one regulatory but multiple regulatory um, agency requirements like fda pmda which is japanese so nmpa and also like health canada or ema each has their own requirements so it's not just a one day thing like you can get into the standards and learn thing but yeah definitely it will take some time it will more when you start working as a statistical programmer on a study you will get to know the details in and out what we're doing from the data collection all the way to tfl and then eventually you'll know you understand the standards there rightly said yeah so it's it's a niche space and uh, you know you need to build a certain amount of experience you need to start working uh, exposing yourself to the yeah. clinical trial data and that is where you kind of understand uh, you know the standards aspect yeah well said yeah, uh, yeah. coming to my so, background so I, also like i started i started basically as a statistical programmer initially right, right. so and then i eventually uh, led studies into end as a lead programmer uh, doing hgtm adam tfl programming and eventually i explored opportunities outside what we can do outside programming right that's where i see a potential uh, now as where companies are looking for this stand this kind of talent like data standards development or data standards maintenance right. so i can use my previous experience as a statistical programmer in getting into this you know standards right and 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 to add um, on i think it's not just like standards we have 
Yeah, one one second, Shiva. I think it's not just standards. You have the tools concept, like building more tools. For me, that's yeah. another stream that you could branch out into. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm doing I'm doing totally different. Like for example, if you if you if you talk if I have to talk about my uh, my current experience, what I'm currently doing, you know, it's it's nothing related to clinical trials. I'm trying. I'm I'm being I'm part of a project where I'm looking for, uh, you know a statistical package or a statistical system, uh, an environment. We are trying to build an environment. So we are bringing all the tools together, all the uh, all the software solutions that we have together, you know, uh, putting it in, you know, on, on a cloud and trying to use it. We are evaluating that process. So I'm part of that particular team. So it's like, you know, you, you can branch out into several areas also. So what I'm trying to say is it's not, you, you, you can evolve basically in this, uh, when you choose this career path, you, 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 you have the opportunity to evolve uh, and branch out. Uh, into different areas. Yeah, Shiva, go ahead. You want you had to. You know, yeah, to say uh, with uh, with Santosh uh, said, like we uh, need to learn uh, something. But uh, as uh, since we already uh, most of the stuff, like what is minimum requirement, like statistical side, like uh, the thing we already uh, learned basic fundamentals. So how to use it? Like where uh, sometimes we know, like whatever uh, we learn in uh, in the bachelor's degree or anything, uh, basic things, uh, statistics things, already math we know mean median some of the things so with that uh, so in the programming when you do programming you see like how quickly we can get that so we might have learned uh, using manual thing like uh, how we calculate you know fundamentals but as of now we have like a lot of packages so how to use that in right way like uh, uh, how uh, how quickly we can get uh, what are the tools are available what are the basically we, what we need to know is uh, which tool what purpose uh, if you know that thing, that is the main uh, key things. Uh, if you know, uh, that's where uh, you can uh, learn and apply uh, uh, what is required for a particular job. So that's where the uh, space we need to learn. And one more thing I wanted to add, like uh, it's very specific if you want to learn uh, pursue in this area. So you have to decide, like, okay, this is the place I need to. And, and that learn whatever options are there, like what are the just make sure uh, at least get some uh, basic understanding what what are the tools are available uh, just know some idea about those things so that way you'll have more knowledge on it you no need to know like everything like uh, end to end in the beginning as a fresher so just know at least okay this tool is there this tool for this purpose so that way uh, yeah, yeah. it's easy to uh, get started right 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 yeah, to elaborate on that thing, actually, we'll we'll jump into the next question where you know I, I all of us have been working uh, with uh, you know programmers in India. Uh, I believe there is definitely a skill gap uh, that that I I've seen. Uh, and uh, why don't we literally go go and deep deep dive into this space and talk about you know the skill gap that you see with people that you're interacting and if you have to compare. Uh, a senior level programmer uh, who is working uh, in your organization, maybe uh, outside US, and somebody who has been uh, in that space for a time uh, in in the US. You know, do you see a skill gap there? And uh, uh, I didn't. After identifying this skill gap, where do you see we can really, you know, uh, help uh, people who you know want to uh, meet the requirement? Uh, and you know, move up the ladder. Uh, who who want to excel in their career? You know, where could we, where could we fill in that space? But before that, you know, uh, my question is like, do you really see that skill gap, uh, Sunil? Uh, I, I let you answer first, uh, and um, yeah, we'll we'll go around. Um, well, let's see. I mean, you know, one of the, one of the things that I really enjoyed when I was managing uh, a team of programmers in India. Is the is a camaraderie, um, people working very well together as a team, um, which I really, which I really like. As you know, in this environment, uh, the concept of, of parallel programming is there. So basically, uh, we have a source programmer that does the development, uh, whether it's SDKs, Atoms, or TLGs, but we also have a QC programmer uh, that's exactly doing the same thing. And so, uh, you know, in this field, that's that's required because we want to make sure that there aren't any um, issues in interpretation of the specifications. And so, uh, what uh, what I what I really like working with the team in India is uh, 
the, the communication is, is really strong, is really strong there, uh, helping each other out. So usually, you know, you have senior, senior programmers and then people kind of new to the team. So pairing, paying those up to help uh, mentor them and answer their questions, be available. Um, and then, you know, if you're not sure about something, always asking. So I think, I think, you know, the skill gap is from, from what I'm seeing is, is a minimum in that they're, you know, the team is really helping each other. Um, but I think that one of the things that I, that I also did see is, you know, I think there is a need for more communication. Uh, I think in general, you know, my team, I had to encourage them to talk, you know, talk more, they need to share, share what they've done, you know, issues that they've encountered, they should not be hesitant, you know, to, uh, to communicate this. And so getting them to open up was, was a little bit of a, of a challenge. And I think that, uh, that still needs to be worked on. People need to understand that, you know, especially here in the U.S., the clients, they expect interaction and they don't want uh, somebody just working isolation, you know, and then, you know, okay, this is the program, you know, that's it, don't communicate with me. No, do you want to be fully engaged? And, and so I think I would encourage, uh, I encourage the programmers in India to, uh, you know, seek that out and really get to know, know your team and communicate internally as well as to the client so that they can see, you know, the progress that, you, that you're doing, issues that you have encountered, um, and then, you know, maybe suggestions that, that you have. So, you know, those are some of the things that, uh, that I would say. Yeah, yeah, uh, I agree, totally agree to it. And then the communication part comes because to my understanding, people know what they're doing, but a lot of people cannot answer why they are doing, you know, why are we, why are, why are we doing an interim analysis? You know, what's, why are we doing, you know, a particular ad hoc? Uh, the storytelling part comes when you know, you know, the why, uh, when you're able to answer the why. Uh, and that is where I see the skill gap. So the, the technically excellent, they're the very good. But, you know, understanding the end-to-end -end process, what happens, why are we doing, uh, and what's the reason? I think that that thing is missing is what, I, what I've seen uh, uh, interacting with, you know, uh, 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 my, my colleagues. So uh, anybody uh, who wants to, you know, yeah. chime in to... That was what I was, I mean, you just spoke the words that I was about to speak. That was what I was thinking that, you know, as Indians, most of us are very good at computational skills, at technical skills, um, at, at programming, which comes pretty much naturally based on our like math background or or the Indian computational skills. But, but in terms of processes, in terms of knowledge, like uh, what is going on, like as Praveen mentioned, why are we doing it? Or uh, why is why why C disk? Or why is, we have so many guidelines when we're working in this industry? Um, those kind of in-depth knowledge on the standards. I think once that comes, and uh, I'm pretty much sure, like as Sunil, I agree with Sunil that like you know, US kind of looks into more communication, and once that concept base is developed. Um, uh, from an education standpoint that is delivered to the students out here, I think the speaking or the communication will naturally come. So uh, I think that, as Praveen said, that is what is uh, um, is what is the is one of the limiting things that I think is happening over in India at least. Well, um, I think I'll quickly jump to the next question. You know, with a AI ML is the next bu I mean the the buzzword now, um, and um, how do you see this impacting the industry? Uh, want to want to hear everybody's perspective on this, and also you know the open source. Uh, let's talk a little bit on open source. We have we have SaaS, uh, very expensive, uh, uh, as 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 a tool that pharmaceutical companies uh, ha they have a separate investment towards this. Uh, you know the AI ML open source. You know what? What's what's your take on this, uh, Santosh? Uh, yeah, are, you, are you okay to speak on this? Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean there is a, a lot of scope. I mean right now we are getting into this um, more exposed to AI, AI or ML 
uh, kind of thing. But there are there there are already been companies which have been doing some kind of background work since last couple of years. You now trying to explore options where they can benefit with this. You know, uh, the aut- automation or with the machine learning can. But still, there is a gap. You know, uh, especially with the automation because it's not fully kind of there is no uh, space that you can fully automate, right? There is still some gaps exactly. because this clinical trial environment, this industry, it's always evolving. Now, when you go back like a few years, few years, there were protocols which were like strictly followed based on the guidance by FDA. But slowly FDA recognized this now to be more flexible enough. They're opening up doors, you know, uh, paving paths for various clinical trial options. That is also something, you know, um, it's very hard to kind of automate things in such, such a way because it's it's very steady to study. Each exactly. study has its own specific. Exactly. Previously, can, when I was a programmer um, back in like a, 10 years ago, uh, we used to have studies you know, within a compound similar, can just copy paste things you now from previous study to, to the new study. Right? But this is not happening now because the protocol itself is completely different. The way the data is collected, the data is flowing across, you know, through the submission process is totally different. So the companies are slowly getting there with the automation. What I can see, um, especially with my company also, they are like kind of having some kind of symposiums. Very, like, right? They are in very early stage, you know, trying to see where we can put in and what we can use those automations in which space. It's not just programming, but also you know, on the data collection side of things are also in the submission kind of things what can be like uh, utilized there coming to open source yeah. Uh, yeah coming to the open source kind of thing yeah i've seen i already see um the regulatory agencies like fda is already accepting open source technologies like so we have seen like cds is collaborating with fda in developing that uh, cosa the core rules which is basically the open source right so yeah there is uh, things i think going well with the open source and uh, companies also trying to you know, incorporate those open source into their own uh, APIs and uh, implement them with their companies. So, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Shiva, yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry, uh, he, 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 I can add later, uh, you can go so, because he, he wanted to talk about R, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I said I let the R guru speak. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, about you know your 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 take on open source you know the uh, submission aspect is it is it really really taking off to the next level uh, the impact of open source or uh, especially uh, in this yeah. area yeah um i uh, thanks for asking um i i too again um i'm i'm kind of a, a dinosaur and this panel and everything because with three decades and um uh, being SaaS programmer for a long time, I too was on the sidelines, and um, you know, in the early early days, you know, maybe four years ago, I kind of saw what is this thing called R, and I thought, okay, um, that's interesting, but you know, I'm going to stay with SaaS. Uh, but things changed, uh, you know, two two and a half years ago when I saw again uh, the reason the reason behind the movement that was going on in R. And so I, I did not want to be left behind. Um, so I took the initiative. I didn't know anything about R. So I did a deep dive and learned everything about R. Um, and I started in some webinars on it. Um, and I developed a website called R Guru uh, because my clients were asking me if I provide training on R. Um, and of course, at that time I didn't, but I developed a curriculum. And, um, you know, I, I again, Understanding the reasons why uh, the industry is going towards our the key the key word as, as Santos mentioned is uh, is collaboration. You know, of course, Pravin mentioned uh, the costs associated with SaaS. Uh, we got to a point where I think it's kind of a saturation point where pharmaceutical companies had spent millions, billions of dollars for so many years on one one particular package that they basically said, you know, enough is enough. There's no need for us to continue to do this, especially when we have a language like like R, open source and predominantly R, where you can do many of the things that you're already doing in SaaS. And there was a growing uh, community of, of R, mainly in the data sciences area. <clears throat> and so what you had is you had uh, scientists, <clears throat> scientists, statisticians who were more knowledgeable about R than, than statistical programmers. And so what happened is the that that 
that trend really continued and then the collaboration that was there. So for the first time ever, uh, you see collaboration among the pharmaceutical companies uh, with FDA, with CDIS, that, that in turn collaboration, that, that is real, the, the, the fruit of labor. Because uh, basically you have everybody communicating with each other, helping each other, because we all basically have a, a common goal. And so I think, uh, you know, people are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel that, okay, this, this, this concept called open source is not going to go away, mainly because they can see that there's so many things that can happen as a result of open source, you know, and, uh, you know, Santosh we're, is mentioning about uh, standards. Standards is, is a real big thing. Um, before CDISC, it was, it was pretty much, uh, you know, chaos, so to speak, uh, in submission world. Uh, CDISC made everything consistent. And the way, the analogy that I like to use for CDISC is, is, is it made submissions into like a manufacturing facility. You know, everybody is very familiar with product because a product you can buy, you can touch, you can, you know, break. You can, you can quantify it, things like that. When you talk about submission, you know, it could be an abstract type term unless you really quantify it. And then that's what standards has done. Standard line, standards made it streamline the process for review. It made things mm -hmm. easier because you're standardizing, you know, variables, variable names, you're standardizing the, the control terminology and standardizing the whole process. So I think that uh, what you're seeing now with the open source is the next level of that, meaning uh, the concept um, of, of packages. So Shiva was mentioning uh, packages. So you'll see and hear things that top pharmaceutical companies are, are spending millions on developing and validating you know, our packages that they want to be available. So if you're, if you're not familiar with, with, with R, you're going to be way behind understanding what the packages are and actually how they're, you know, how to use them. The packages are enabled us to kind of get a, a jump start. You know, it's another language, um, but it's not something that uh, is, is extremely difficult. It can be learned. Um, and then, you know, people need to learn the, the leverage, uh, you know, these things that are going to be, I think, kind of the, the new standards that uh, pharmaceutical companies and organizations, organizations are, will be expecting. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, correct. I, uh, uh, echo with you, Sunil, on that. Uh, Shiva, you you have done a lot of our work. Uh, I think you've uh, uh, done some ad hocs also uh, in your previous company that you're working for. Your experience with R uh, and um, how much should one know, uh, even if he's coming as a fresher? If you if you were the interviewer, uh, how much do you expect the candidate to know about R? Uh, and how would you know Pesido be helping uh, in the in that area? Uh, you know, a little bit, and then the, and then you have worked on several tools. Little, you know, uh, why don't you a little bit talk about that as well? Yeah, in in, in related with the other languages uh, other than SAS, like uh, just wanted to uh, add, uh, but for as a initial stage, like if the fresh one, like if you want to start with programming language, if you don't know any other programming language. If you want to like initially first thing, first uh, requirement is they wanted to get a job. So in that case, they have to start with SAS because immediately if he not knowing SAS, if you want to learn R and start his career, it will be very difficult to get a job, like only use R, uh, uh, R programming. So basically they have to uh, start with uh, SAS. Uh, if, the, if they know R, it's an additional advantage, uh, like additional plus. Uh, as of now, uh, but it's still there is some time uh, to completely because as of now, like industry is already uh, built their uh, legacy tools by using SaaS. Uh, even though uh, like a lot of uh, uh, around that uh, area, like the, by using SaaS only, they built all the tools and standard standardized uh, their programs and everything. So if you completely, if they want to change one uh, language, it will take some time. So that's what I see. Uh, as of now, slowly, as because of uh, casting, like uh, uh, moving towards uh, like open source, like R, Python, and all. But now they're trying to uh, utilize both, like uh, one side, like SAS, and one side R, other languages, to make sure that uh, it's doing its uh, purpose. Like uh, in that case, so once if you know one language, 
knowing other languages very easy something like that if you know one tool like in the music you can easily right. learn other languages similarly like if you know one language easy to understand it don't take uh, much time to learn other language so quickly you can adapt so in that space uh, like we can uh, once if you know sas uh, easily you can like parallelly you can just get introduced how we can use with uh, what same uh, we can parallelly compare side by side like a chat sheet or something so that we easily uh, the person one who uh, parallelly can learn both languages uh, with a little yeah. bit of help uh, that way in my experience like we using r uh, industry yes uh, they are building uh, like uh, tools like standardized packages similarly like how we had like uh, company standard macros like uh, in the sas uh, r packages also developed so nowadays uh, the uh, fda also accepting uh, the tools like you can you know you know you no need to generate like complete uh, uh, listings so just they use the tool to review that way they can speed up their process like uh, something like that uh, so we have read, uh, with the help of like automation and all those things like uh, as of now uh, some of the companies they use their own uh, uh, tools uh, to provide uh, a review process and all those things like in my career i used yeah, a lot of right. like uh, standard tools like uh, r and tscg and other tools so that way uh, no need to stick with the programming language we had to uh, see uh, along with the language we had to know some of the like some tools what fda uses and also some standard uh, big companies they use so it can be learned uh, it's like uh, if you know some information about those tools it will be helpful um, so right yeah 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 i i i would definitely you know would like to interview a candidate where i see little bit of r on his resume uh, does it need to be you know uh, something to do with a submission or something to do, i mean some exploration with r i would de- definitely see because i think that i i i see that the candidate has some interest in learning uh, exploring some new space uh, and um, i think if somebody uh, definitely at pesido we would be a little bit uh, exploring in that area as well we would help ca- uh, students uh, learn the basics of you know the packages how 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 you use a package how you write a function um, the, the the minimum that's required uh, that would be more of an icing on the cake uh, when they go for an interview right so we are all called statistical programmers i think my next question how much of this statistical understanding should one have uh, when when you know they're, they're again break, want to break into this industry uh, santosh uh, why don't you go first right um, yeah i have seen that uh, um, major misconception uh, for a lot of uh, starters especially you know when we talk about statistical programmers they all think that we have a background of biostatistics and uh, that's not that's not completely true i mean for the statistical programmers definitely yeah they need to understand what we are doing you know uh, for a study for the purpose of what but they don't need to have the background bio- biostatistics uh, knowledge when I mean, that's more in depth understanding of you know uh, the data and the analysis but what you're doing on your role definitely yes um, like for example you're generating a summary table of demographics you know of um, a subject uh, on on a race or or um, um, the, the the gender you know or some baseline characteristics definitely yes like the, like the summary statistics based on n mean median definitely need to know what is those what are those you know and also the primary endpoints for a study like overall survival and all those kind of things you need to understand what is that but you don't have to go into beyond beyond that uh, because that's the responsibility of a different department within within the clinical study that's uh, called a biostats of a study and they are pretty much well versed in those um, those languages or in those uh, terminologies but um, yes yeah. um, it's it's not a requirement to have a biostatistics background for a statistical programmer right right totally totally agree it's it's not at all a requirement but again when we come to analyzing the data what we do is the, the programs that we ri- write are you know analyzing the numbers it's all about the number game so it is it is 
pretty much it it'll benefit you as as an individual if you are able to understand what what's what's the story behind the number if you're so, so the communication comes i, I think we, going back to the previous point yeah. uh, that sunil said you know uh, that's where the communication comes in you know why is this value low or why is this value negative where it has to be positive you know you, uh, you can't uh, you know you, so these these things uh, are are certain basic uh, 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 areas one needs to focus on uh, to understand uh, so uh, where you answer the why part uh, again anybody wants to chime in there for this this particular question i would like um, to add uh, some point on this one uh, like i know like uh, statistical background uh, is uh, whatever you know like uh, minimum thing is uh, important like if you know keywords uh, like what is the basic like mean mean and what it is expecting uh, and some of the things additional things you should know uh, once you're coming here uh, in this like a p value what is p value mean so those kind of things uh, if you know what is the significance uh, that will be uh, beneficial but uh, only thing if you know how to get it the, as a programmer uh, statistical programmer means you know how, what procedure need to be used in where so that is the requirement it is not no need to know like uh, what a test is in, used in between like what is the how it is calculated what is the formula to get that value a p value or a uh, confidence interval that, that may not be a requirement that's not a mandatory but only the thing is that as a programmer you know what procedure need to use uh, what are the uh, what procedure what kind of output it give so if you know that information that's be a uh, requirement uh, it's not a mandatory to know complete statistics uh, like what is the yeah. ratio yeah. and all those things so yeah. 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 Uh, my next question actually uh, to maybe uh, people who have uh, experience in another area in another field uh, who has maybe experience with saas a little bit but not in the pharma industry or who are part of pharma industry work in a different function how how important is it for them to understand the clinical domain uh, to excel in this space or break into this space forget about excelling but you know breaking into this area uh, so can i can i break into this industry with just just technical skills i just have saas experience or i have r experience can uh, is it possible with this uh you know uh competition that we see around can i as an individual uh sunil what do you think on this yeah so um i've had uh you know people coming into the field asking basically you know you, and the thing is it's, it's not difficult to learn uh clinical data and and how clinical studies work um people need to realize that um it, it's not rocket science uh the clinical data there's there's a process there's methodology um and uh these things uh you know understanding uh you know the, the keywords uh, because it's 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 a very structured you know type of approach uh so i think you know understanding how what the clinical data is uh it, it is it is basically a requirement you can't you can't be functional i mean even as a saas programmer you know they you're always focusing on on the data if you don't if you're not in tune with expectations of the data then it doesn't matter if you're a top top programmer you you're still going to fail because you're not going to understand uh, where issues can arise and data issues can happen um a programmer you know could be air free but that doesn't mean it it's correct uh because you could be doing things with the data that that's that's not correct at all and so you really need to really uh, know and understand and something that you know that that can be learned so it's not a difficult thing it's a very process very structured um you know once you know and understand the clinical data then you need to know the next step you know the cdis requirements because it's right. it's like a complete package so yeah yeah great thank you uh, kalyan your your take on this uh, you you come from a science background yeah uh, i know but you i don't know how much of exposure you had then uh, understanding you know the phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 how yeah, are connected um, uh, how was how was you know what do you what, what would be your suggestion for somebody with you know your skills uh, your background 
and your learning your learning process your experience if you could talk about uh, yeah so i i came from from a completely like a preclinical background with biotech genetic bioinformatics and stuff um so like basic research from r and d so back then i didn't know i i had like a basic knowledge of statistics like what statistics is from my education whatever i had like uh during my 10th class and come and moving into like a biology kind of a background i didn't have much touch with maths uh, or statistics here and there there was some some level of uh, statistics involved but most of it was uh, bioinformatics and stuff and nothing much of statistics but um but coming from that field like you know um the programming part was pretty easy like learning technical mm -hmm. skills how to learn how to program um uh, in in uh, be it like r be it like sas it's pretty easy it can be picked up um the clinical domain knowledge is 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 very much important because like as uh, sunil was mentioning or like uh, uh, previously like santosh was mentioning you would need that uh, as you work on a, on your day to day activities in this in this field we are in this clinical trials and that knowledge of clinical domains is very much important otherwise you as uh, sunil was mentioning you could you could be a real out and out programmer but if you don't know what what you're developing like if you have a demographic table if you have like uh, basically if you're working on a data sets or an sdtm data set or an atom data set if you don't know why you're deriving it um and uh, and to apply that whatever the output that you have got correctly whether you are applying the correct uh, standards over there um you would require the clinical uh, knowledge that is pretty much important um no i'm not, i'm just not talking about clinical trials even if you were to take your sas expertise into a total different uh do, domain such as like financial domain or financial sas you would have to learn the financial domain as well so the domain knowledge is is very much important over here um as for long i i came to know like after working for many years in this field like stas clinical sas programming is out of 100% i would say if it is like 50 to 60% is programming but remaining 40% lies with understanding what's happening and you know uh, understanding the process and um, and fine tuning your programs to what is the requirement so domain knowledge will be very much important uh, in this field i would i would uh, that would be my uh, take on it awesome awesome uh, quickly uh, santosh your point if you want to add some, uh, shiva anything that you want to add i'll move to my last question uh, and uh, summarize on what we uh, intend to do uh, yeah, i think it's to uh, standard like along with the programming uh, knowing like the standards like what is the requirement and also the important thing is that uh, the data flow uh, how what are the it is collecting basically it can you can uh, easily relate that uh, every every time when you go to the hospital you see the the big form uh, you see like what are the information they're collecting and where it goes and that's what you need to understand um, so what kind of data where it goes how it is processed that flow you, you need to understand uh, i mean it is just a theory but it, it will be very easy to compare to any other uh, domain uh, knowledge so it will be very easy to understand uh, clinical side like process once you into this field uh, uh, any any uh, non technical or non bio biology, uh, biology background person also can easily quickly adapt this uh, you can uh, from the different uh, background banking sector or the um, finance they they can come here and they can learn uh, anyone can pursue this uh, career uh, very easy and the size is also easy to learn that's what i wanted yeah, to add yeah. and also domain uh, again it will be stride forward uh, once you learn that can be um, like added uh, day to day so that way like um, that's what i wanted to add uh, on this point it's not that difficult to learn uh, standards or the programming Wonderful. So uh, lastly, you know, I'd like to again, um, which I've already said, we would be soon launching several cohorts 
uh, tailored to individual backgrounds and their experiences. And we will be enrolling students into each cohort based on their qualifications and their aspirations. Uh, how we do this is we come as a panel. Each individual that you see here, and also there's another one missing from the panel here, uh, who is more specialized in R, who has done a lot of work, uh, work in R uh, for FDA and EMA. Uh, uh, so we as a panel, we are experienced in our own areas. We are specialized in our own, own space. Uh, and that is where we would come uh, with a proper curriculum to train you uh, where uh, you, after you know the complete uh, 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 training would come out uh, as an individual who has got a good amount of experience to showcase yourself. You project yourself as the right candidate for the, the opportunity, which is statistical programmer. And uh, uh, that so that is where we are different. And uh, and it's more of a targeted training that we would that you would get. And uh, it's it's more of a mentorship. Uh, and we are here to help students, especially. Uh, from our homeland uh, to excel uh, in this dynamic field of biostatistics and programming uh, within the pharmaceutical biotech CRO industry. Uh, uh, and then I would also, you know, uh, we have Naresh. Uh, I would like to ask one quick question uh, because you have seen, you have, you have a lot of experience there. You've seen a lot of institutes, a lot of, a lot of uh, companies there uh alluring students to join them uh for uh, getting trained in this space what do you think uh according to you how different are we from other other institutes in india uh you don't have to refer take names uh of any other institutes but if you want to you know uh talk a little bit uh on how are we projecting ourselves and you know uh how a student would find us different uh, yeah, uh, hi, Prabhat. I totally uh, understand like uh, what the panelists and the experts have shared their opinions on the skill gap and etc. Like, uh, let me share my own uh, experience when I initially moved into like uh, into the industry. Uh, basically, I'm from a programming background. Like, programming is not a tough task for me. It was a bit easy when compared to my other. Uh, technical programming languages. The challenging part comes uh, even getting placed at that time. It was not a big tough task for me because I had good um, uh, well-known industry people. So, But entering into the industry when we start working as a, a, a team uh, a team performer, the problem was like collaborating are uh, correlating the things actually. The programming is one part and understanding the requirements of the client. And generally we used to have these uh, expectations like what they're expecting from that particular analysis and that particular um, uh, TLFs, what they're ex expecting and we need to tailor to as per that. But as a fresher to the team, as a, like, a new candidate into the team, we were in a like a mute situation. We were unable to correlate the things in a proper way because we were not uh, made in that way because the training pattern, what we had and the exposure, what we got during the uh, exposure to the things, we didn't have that angle itself. Malab, understanding the data was never a question or never the aspect of our uh, training as actually. So uh, whenever when I was getting trained, like it was never... To actually, uh, when uh, after these many years of experience, like I feel like we need to interact with the data. Actually, we need to interact with the data. We need to correlate the data as much as required. So understanding the data will give a purpose, like what you are doing, why you are doing, and what you'll get out of that. So I feel like uh, in that place we are totally different. We are totally different, and uh, will give this platform like our platform will provide such kind of interaction with the data to the people so that it doesn't matter whatever the tool they work on whatever the language they work on but the end result uh, is you you will have a story to tell with the data actually when you understand the data in a proper way and when you 
get that um, expected result or even the result might vary from the expectations but you will have a story to tell because you have a whole understanding on the data itself uh, how the data is moving and how the data is getting deviated from the expectations of the client so you can tell like what's going wrong like what's with the wrong with the data we need to approach a diff different team so these kind of things will be addressing in our platform so i don't know the name but uh, it's totally lacking in the current um, ecosystem of trainings and other things not all but majority of the indian training uh, ecosystem we lack a lot on this um that's I where we that. i hope we can uh, leverage that and we'll give the cater to the candidates that will help a lot of them uh, to be a better performer in the industry very very well said uh, very well said narish for that time uh, like we would add, be uh... yeah yeah good good sure okay uh, so uh... I I just would like to add uh, some more points here. Like I uh, you know, like uh, when we uh, get information or get trained uh, outside our other uh, industry, what I see is even though if they completed uh, theoretically, like theoretical knowledge, I know like uh, if you know, but you, even though you can learn uh, the knowledge or standards or anything, you can uh, know. But the thing is that until unless you see uh, real data and work uh, parallelly. and at least practice uh, like uh, six months on go everything and uh, see when outside when you read uh, something like you know everything you know once you start working on it then only you know like what are the uh, pieces like where we are missing so once you really you have to complete uh, like one study irrespective of it by yourself then only you have real experience that is what we are trying to uh, provide here uh, so once you uh, join us like what we do is just will give a uh, real time uh, data and uh, it just work uh, like a, from end to end uh, where you extract data and you go uh, you will will put you in the real scenario like uh, attending meetings and then that's where you get how you communicate how you col collaborate with other team uh, communicating with the stats or communicate with the data management what are the data issues so that's where you can you no need to tell like story so you already working here basically within 6 months you can you can get experience of it almost like a year and a half so that's where uh, because since you uh, since you will have like a lot of time so you can uh, experience yourself and you can work with us and that's where you can uh, different from other uh, homes ever like uh, industry training so it's not a training what we're giving is experience so that's I wonderful that. wonderful yeah i think i think that's the statement we are we, you're not getting you're not getting trained here you're getting experience with us and uh, we would be strategically using the resources that be uh, that we have uh, by mr sunil uh, that are available online uh, whether it's has savvy or our guru uh, and also himself uh, uh, on 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 the need purpose uh, he would uh, i i i think uh, sunil i'm taking the liberty of saying that you know you would definitely be part of uh, a guest lecture uh, uh, with with pasido soon uh, on 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 um, the cohorts that that we you know plan to have uh, and uh, one or two words about you. your resources that. it would yeah one or two sentences about your resources would uh, if you if you want to share uh, oh, to, sure. to the Yeah, I, I do encourage uh, everybody on this uh, call. Um, again, uh, I love to make use of uh, resources, and um, you know, feel free to visit uh, sasavi.com or r r dash guru dot com. Uh, take a look at the resources that I've accumulated. Um, I've I built that uh, basically working on on practical projects, uh, asking asking questions, uh, just like, I mean. we were all in your shoes at at one time and there're not there're those times you know we seek out and ask you know for advice for people who had a little more experience than we did so um i i i built i built that together based on the knowledge that i've gained so feel free to please uh, reach out to those sites uh, with the resource out there and uh, you know reach out to me with any any questions you have and uh, you know connect with me on linkedin if if you are interested Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sunil. Uh, before we open uh the session for Q and A, uh, Kalyan Santosh, you want to just quickly say, you know, or or and anything about our curriculum, anything one or two sentences, like how a student would benefit coming to us. 
Yeah, I can start. Um, yeah, I mean, I echo with whatever Sunil has mentioned and Naresh has mentioned, Shiva has mentioned, pretty much, you know, uh, understanding the data flow is really key. It's not something you can learn uh, online or you can just learn by books, you know, having experience, experience seeing the data. You need that mentorship. Time. Yeah, yes. yeah. And looking the flow of the data, you know, where it's starting, where it's ending. How, we, how it's being architected, you know, throughout the process. You know, you'll, you'll see the data coming as a raw data and how it's been architected as an HTM or an ADM or TFLs, you know. Seeing that, I mean, experience in that really will help you understand like more insight into this, uh, the, the role as a statistical programmer. Wonderful. I would just keep it short. I would just add the real time to whatever like uh, Shiva's quote was that here you'll get the real-time experience where you'll, you'll actually look into the um, real-time experience from different backgrounds, from different works, different streams of studies that we have worked on or whatever our experience is. So you'll be uh, you'll be listening to that experience in real-time, like what, what kind of issues we face um, out of norm, clinical trials, on everything. So... Uh, so I would just keep it short at that, that uh, it's the real-time experience that you'll get over here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll I'll just allow 10 minutes for a QA and a if you're all okay. Uh, I, I, Sunil, I know it's too late for you. Uh, yeah, that's it's, okay. It's up to you. I don't want to force you. Yeah, but uh, yeah. just a quick Q&A, please. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Uh, Shiva, you can open up the chat for Q and A, and also I'll. Uh, Naresh has collected a few questions that uh, he'd like to put for us. I mean, Naresh, if you think that you know we have not covered uh, as part of the discussion, uh, why don't you pose that question, or you feel free to ask. Um. Yep. Uh. Yep. Uh, mainly for Sunil, I have a question like. Uh, what drives you to guide a lot of uh, enthusiasts like us currently uh, till because he's in industry from longer duration? Um, so if I understand your question, you're a little bit uh, hazy. So so you're asking what what's what's my driving force since I've been in industry for such a long time? So uh, and what's, um, uh, what drives you to, uh, you know? Be a mentor, actually. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I guess you know, in the in the early early days and high school days, I I I, I tutored. Uh, I like to share share what I've learned. You know, it's kind of a thing that um, you know to help to help others. Uh, one of the things that I quickly learned uh, when I when I take on this responsibility is that uh, not only do I feel good when I'm sharing some knowledge that I've learned to others. But it actually become it makes me become more of an expert because that forces me to really have a thorough understanding of the knowledge and be able to explain it in simple terms. And so at that time, you know, uh, you know, of course, you can get some extra income that way. So it's, it's rewarding that way too. But I think the fact that you know sharing sharing the knowledge, helping them, you know, get to the same level that that you are as far as understanding a concept and. And for me myself, you know, I, I'm a I'm a I'm an applied math major, so not even you know statistical programming or anything, but um, you know some of the math concepts it, it came easy for me. But um, I like to help others, so I think that type of motivation that was the driving force uh, for me to you know do do more training, put together books, and put together hands-on workshops because I get I I get um, you know reinforcement and happiness by helping others. I think that's the bottom line. I, I see a question. Somebody with pharmacovigilance. Uh, I'll quickly, you know, answer that. I know you work on you. You, you pharmacovigilance plays a crucial role in this. You, you're more towards drug safety, uh, risk assessment. You already have a basic understanding, so I think it would more be uh, as as everybody we talked about. It would be a SAS is not rocket science. You know, uh, if 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 you're comparing it with the Java, if you're comparing it with even C C sharp. It's it's not at all difficult. SAS is very easy to learn. It's more about uh, the domain. The flow of data is what you need to understand. And uh, we are here. We are there to you know uh, push you uh, for the next six to eight months uh, uh, to for you to acquire that knowledge. 
And I could just chime in to uh, Praveen's thing that, you know, um, basically, I think the second question is about pretty similar from a bee pharmacy background. I'm, I myself, I'm not from like a programming background, but but 90% of the same time you have the code available online, like, you know, you, you will search in SAS um, um, and then you will find different types of code that are available, different functions that are available. And then you can plug in and play with it. So SAS is really easy. The programming part is very easy, as Praveen is mentioning. It's not so complicated as other programming uh, languages out there. Similar, similarly with R to R is pretty easy um, to learn. So I, I think you guys will be like not. I'm I'm just trying to give you kind of uh, encouragement. So B farm C farm co vigilance anything with the science background stats maths background or for that matter any any basic math background is will be like a perfect uh this career would be like a perfect fit for those kind of people coming from those streams right right yeah i can take the next question actually job assistance uh see uh once once as as we as we already said you're getting experience uh, you join us you're getting experience it's not some training that you're getting you're already you know showcasing your experience uh, uh to the interviewer uh, to the organization that you intend to uh, you know join uh, at the same time it's all about your commitment uh, we the, we are there to provide that assistance we are there to vouch you you know it's it's our stamp on you saying this person has done everything that we wanted him to uh, he 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 is he has excelled in this space. He is ready to go, and with our you know we, we, as we vouch you, it's 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 an uh, additional advantage for an individual uh, because we are recognized. Uh, people know us. Uh, it's a recommendation that we are already you know setting, uh, and we through our contacts we will definitely promote you to get the job. At the same time, it's you know it's not like you join, you pay a fee. You finish the course. You're, you know, you're, you you you're, you're, you're behind us to find a job. It's not like that. You, we want you to go through that rigorous process. At the same time, at the end of the course, a, a month to forty five days is where you will be, you know, put through only interviews. You know how, what, what kind of because we we sit on the other side of the table. We know what kind of questions uh, one asks and uh, what uh, what are the answers that we expect. So we prepare you that way. And we will provide you that assistance uh, with respect to, you know, finding a role. Uh, SAS certification, not really, but, you know, it's good to have. Uh, 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 not really, uh, Pratap Reddy, four to five years of experience. Yes, they do, but they're encouraging people with uh, no experience, but a lot of knowledge in this space. As 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 we already said, the, the industry is growing. Uh, people are recruiting pressures. And uh, we have seen things happening that way. And again, when you join us, it is not a training that you're getting. Your, your, you can project yourself uh, as somebody with a good amount of experience because you're working on some real-time fake data. Uh, just I would like to add uh, something uh, here. See, as an interviewer, if I see, like even though uh, one year or uh, two years experience, I won't see as a candidate, like whether how much you know, that's what I see. Uh, how well you uh, handle that situation. That's what I see, uh, even though if you're coming from like uh, four years or five years, uh, even though whether you have a certification or not, like when I see you, you just, whatever you experience, that will talk itself. You, you no need to uh, like uh, give uh, other information. Like when you know thoroughly, like well, at least you uh, completed one study, so then you can talk about around it. So that that's itself, it shows that, okay, you committed and you learned, already you did, so that uh, that way you can be selected rather than other, like out of 10 people, of all are like one or two experience and then uh, just they have completed their training by learning. If you go with this route and you can answer and you can definitely can clear the interview. So that's what I would like to add. Um, yep. Uh, Ravin, just in continuation to our recent recent query in the chat about R replacing SAS, like can, in continuation to that only, can AI replace our jobs as a statistical programmers? Companies developing different tools or personal tools are using uh, R, Python, etc. Uh, 
can still remain constant against all these quick changes happening in the industry. Yeah, I, 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 I would, uh, you know, Sunil, you want to answer that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think, and people ask me this question all the time. And I think back to when SaaS Enterprise Guide, you know, first came out and people were worried, okay, um, I'm losing my job because Enterprise Guide writes the program so they don't want to need me anymore. That's, that's far from, from the truth. Uh, there was always a need for SaaS programmers when Enterprise Guide came out, and still there still was. Um, I think SaaS is still going to going to going to be there. Um, it's not going to it's not going to go away or completely be replaced by R. I think they're both will be working side by side. The other thing I just want to add is, you know, obviously there's a AI revolution going on, and I'm sure people can see, you know, the ramifications for that. But it's not it's not that it can replace, you know, it, it, it's a tool, you know, tools are there. Just like, you know, uh, a handsaw, uh, hammer, tools are there, but they're only as good as, you know, how you, how you use it effectively. And if you don't know how to use it, you know, tools need to be used by a user. So there's, there will always be, I think, a need um, to, you know, for, for programmers. So it's not gonna be completely replaced. So programmers time will be used better you know better use better use of their time instead of doing the things that the tools will help us so be able us become more you know efficient yeah um, in other words to put what, what sunil is mentioning is ai uh, there is a long notion that ai will take away all the jobs but you have to understand that ai cannot exist without hi which is human intelligence so hi and there is nothing that will replace HI, human intelligence. So even for an AI to function, you would require um, a human uh, logic to understand how that tool is working. So you would need a validator no matter what in this study. So uh, there is no replacement for human intelligence as of now. AI is not going to take away any other jobs. And regarding to the SAS and uh, R, um, I would agree with Sunil, they both will coexist together uh, uh more of they might they might kind of, kind of complement each other uh but there is no r replacing sas completely or uh there's no competition over here that is what i can just say right right well said well said in in layman terms it's like you know just answer a question will autopilot replace drivers no not really they coexist uh, uh, because you know it's it's the humans who finally uh, you know it, it, it interact and they they need to provide the directions. Uh, AI, uh, you know, autopilot can never replace uh, a complete uh, end to end drive. You know, you, you need drivers. So and this is just in layman terms. But yeah, as Sunil said, Kalyan said, they 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 both would coexist, and uh, uh, SaaS would never SaaS cannot be replaced at all. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to add one more point here. Uh, I mean, in, since uh, AI and all, like, uh, of course, like initially we had uh, uh, to execute one study. It, it was taking like one year. Now you can run like in 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 a month or two. If you have a data, you can complete like ten projects. But still, uh, number of projects are increasing. So number of uh, studies are coming. New diseases are coming. So we have to find a lot of. There will be a lot of scope. So even though automation and any uh, complete uh, scheme. Like still, like if you learn, if you know how to use that tool, here what you're going to learn is how to use that tool, SaaS or uh, AI or anything. So, but still, you need uh, the knowledge, uh, the what uh, you need to be uh, learn like how to use that. Uh, even though to uh, we need to tell the AI also like what to be done. So, so still the HI is needed. Like as uh, Kalyan said. Yeah, sorry, a small correction. I think I, I was trying to, uh, the analogy that I was drawing, it's it's not uh, SaaS R. SaaS, I was trying to, you know, make an analogy by between SaaS and AI. So, sorry for that. But yeah, uh, yes, you would be getting R, R training as well. They would be uh, uh, places where we would, you know, once you finish the base SaaS training, there would be sessions where you would, get the our, our, our training as well uh, to the next question. Naresh, any, uh, any more questions? 
three questions I have, like it's entitled to the panel. Anyone can answer. Is CDM related activities totally different from uh, statistical programming activities? Would we get trained outside? That's one query. Yeah, Shiva, you, uh, you can answer that. Uh, the clinical so data is, management. Uh, see, so programming thing, like when you're learning programming, parallelly, if you give, okay, this need to be done in the some kind of structure. So the structure is just three days. Like, uh, you, so parallelly, when you're practicing programming, so you go with that. So parallelly, you learn both. So uh, standards are uh, important so that uh, knowing that standards is very important. Uh, so along with the programming, yes, of course, you learn uh, uh, standards as well. Uh, uh, I think the question was around data management, right? Yeah, CD, clinical data management. Uh, CDM, so, yes, of course, like uh, as a programmer, uh, that's a different uh, department. Uh, like they have, uh, like they use the different tools like Rave database and all those things. So if that is the case, like uh, you can learn both. So here we can give like a high level, like how uh, we get like the ones, if you're working towards the data management, that's entirely different uh, cohort. So I think, uh, also, I think, I think somebody, somebody with data management experience wants to make uh wants uh, uh to jump into transition. programming is that the question yeah that see that way it's it very, would be pretty easy different yeah. background you can learn uh SAS programming say one advantage with uh, those who are coming from data management already they know the data and flow what kind of data it comes only thing here is one advantage for them is uh, like very easily they can pick like where it goes uh where it, uh, domain off of the domain knowledge they already have, like what kind of information they're looking into it. Uh, it's, it's an added advantage for them and the learning fast is anyhow anyone can learn. And also see this uh, parallelly along with the programming language, they learn uh, the standards. That way they quickly they can, uh, quickly they can find a uh, position in uh, programming side. Uh, yep. Uh, in chat, there's one more question. Recently, we came across pre-human clinical trials no longer use animals in these trials. Regulatory bodies approved to avoid animals in clinical trials. What are the technologies will play a key role in future in this situation? There's a question by Sandeep Gonella. Uh, sure. I, uh, I'm sorry, I was wrong on mute. So I didn't, I didn't fully understand the question. Uh, uh, it, yeah, like if you wanna have it, it, yeah. so in clinical trials, what are the technologies? Is 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 that the question? Uh, by, I mean, if uh, if I understand correctly, like. Uh, I'm trying to ask like no uh, pre uh, like animals are used in uh, preclinical trials or yeah, I mean I, I think... fully didn't I mean anybody Santosh Kalyan uh, in case if you understand it's generally for preclinical trials we use uh, uh, animals right uh, I mean. right yeah uh, so further now uh, they, like they are avoiding the animals for the clinical trials now. Are there any tools which are being developed and uh, which tools will play a key role in the future for this purpose of preclinical trials? Like, um, I would say they're totally different. Uh, that's that's not our area, basically. Preclinical is not. Yeah. See, still um, preclinical, they wanted to. Uh, test the new compound like uh, so how it works so we don't know like how it will react with uh, antibodies right like uh, until unless if you know that how it react with the existing one so i don't think so like 100 percent it will replace it still they have to uh, undergo like preclinical and then only uh, we know that whether it how safe it is safety is important right like uh, I don't think so. It will be completely replaced. Uh, it might be like uh, tested uh, initially, like we, they has to go through rigorous, like multiple tests for now. It might be reduced, but the thing is that it will be still there. That's what uh, my understanding. So, so my understanding is like there are two different poles of 
uh, of one of one platform. Uh, so preclinicals is something even before in a lab. So as far as my knowledge goes, it usually is done in small small lab animals like mice or sometimes baboons and stuff like that. So when it when you when you add in the term of clinical and you take out the pre, that's when human starts. Uh, that is why you know any any drug is being made into like first in humans. So that is why all this uh, process of clinical trials, everything comes in. So I would say um, right now, anything that is clinical is humans. Like you take like phase one, two, three, four, uh, and post-marketing studies, all of them are like phase, are, are in humans, preclinicals are in animals. And as of now, I, I don't think there is any technology that is separating them. The only thing is there are two different poles of one different platform. And uh, I would just keep it at that. Thank you, Kalyan. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Niharika, I think uh, it would be, once, as you said, you have already done this as course. Uh, maybe we would try to assess you and see what cohort you fall into. Uh, yes, you could still t uh, because you need additional skills. Uh, to you know, call yourself as a statistical programmer in this space. So, you know, we'll try to assess you and see where you fit into. And of course, you can you can definitely be part of one of the cohorts. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Kalyan, yeah, I, like, I think, yeah, yeah. What, Narish? Uh, two more questions I have. Like, I'll closely, we'll close this thing. And yeah, one is uh, regarding... before, before, before you ask, actually, let's close the chat, uh, uh, Shiva. Uh, the, but the, we have one question with respect to RWE. Kalyan, you want to talk about it? Yeah. So, yeah. So, RWE basically it is like real world evidence trials, uh, which is, I mean, the word. The word comes from uh, patients who are there available in the real world. So what these trials are, um, like how these trials function is 90% um, of the clinical trials, like, you know, when, when recruitment is being done, you recruit uh, the medical, the pharmacy companies, or most of them, the kind of um spend a lot of expenditure in recruiting these patients like they advertise there's a lot of cost gone into advertisements there are a lot of cost gone into paying the patients to be a part of a clinical trial um, and there's a lot so of effort there, to maintain the sites right Kalyan. yes the, the size of it there's a lot of effort sites, sites. The, the sites and there's a lot of effort to make ensure that the patient come back like 90 percent of the of the time the patients uh, like if you take an oncology trial, for example, the patients are so weak that uh, or any cardiovascular or renal metabolism uh, trial where patients are really aged, like about 60, they have like heart issues and they cannot come into a, they cannot come into like uh, for the visits for each, each and every visit that you have during a clinical trial, they cannot come. So what happens is they have, uh, to avoid all this, what pharmaceutical uh, companies are doing is they have these different kind of data centers, which have like which are basically like hospitals, and in other terms they are called as registries. So they have these databases of of uh, patients. Like if you if you go cancer research center something like that, so it'll have all the database of the patients who have had cancer who have been gotten treatment at that particular hospital. So what the real world evidence trial is uh, something where the pharmaceutical companies directly recruit these patients from the hospital. So, so and it is done on a real population of uh, patients. So that is, that is what basically a real world evidence trial is like. So the recruiting agency becomes the hospital, becomes the hospital rather than the clinics and it is something like you know taking the therapies directly to the patients rather than making patients come into your trial. So uh, 
the there are lots of benefits with real world evidence trials one of them is basically cost reduction for pharma companies uh, patients do not have to come into uh, the clinics you can employ a lot of digital health monitoring that is uh, like you can even deliver therapies uh, to the patient you can monitor whatever whatever medicines or whatever treatment drugs that are taking everywhere uh, every day during the course of that study um, remotely so that is that is basically what a real world evidence trial is it is done on like it, it is like pragmatic or practical trials which are conducted in real uh, population yeah. real patient population so that is what is a real world evidence trial and the database is not like it it's not like designed yeah, it's, like it's in, not in, in, in the it's not it's like not, a regular you don't have a crf yeah, yeah 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 so that is where that is what makes it a little bit complex but it's but it's a lot of cost cutting for the pharmaceutical company but challenging for programming mm, yeah right yeah to you yeah like it's a, a bit lengthy question but i'll try to give chunks of the question to you yeah we'll we'll, we'll actually you, yeah it's 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 get, it's getting late so we'll summarize it quickly yeah yeah uh, i'll ask in total so you can answer it like in complete you have been mentioning about cohorts can you brief on that and along with that do we have an equal opportunity uh regarding the placement decisions you mentioned the third is can like do you have a portal or a platform for the opportunities for the multiple streams you shared in the intro video of passive tech okay uh, so with cohorts you know uh, as as uh, you know we have seen people coming from different backgrounds somebody who might be coming with no experience directly freshly out of school when i say school i mean to say uh, a college uh, and who wants to break into this industry who, who has a b farm degree or who has a b tech degree you know that would be one set of cohort another cohort could be who have already been trained uh, in the area of saas who has been to another institute but you know there is a skill gap definitely uh, who wants to try out to see if you know through us if they could break into the industry that could be another cohort uh, another cohort completely could be already working in the pharma industry in a different function who again wants to uh, build a career in the uh, programming uh, statistical programming space that could be another cohort so you know based on the candidates that we try to assess uh, we would form these cohorts uh, and uh, and and you know create these batches and have a different curriculum designed for you know each cohort and that's how we would like to proceed placement assistance as i told you it's an assistance uh, so the entire program that we design will give you the experience so you can talk about when you sit for an interview uh, we are pretty confident that when you talk you're going to impress the uh, person sitting on the other side of the table making it believe that you have you have got that you have, you uh, you've got the skill uh, when he puts you in on uh, 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 on day one when he try tries to assign you he get, he has the belief that you you will be able to finish the job so that is where we will take you so now how you perform and and we will vouch for you like the the contacts that we have built in the industry over time the colleagues that we work with in india we definitely going to say hey try try this candidate out uh, he Uh, he has done he has gone through a rigorous course a curriculum uh, that we put through and you know he he qualifies to be uh, you know uh, a candidate or the right candidate for for the, for, the, for the opportunity that you are trying to fill in you know that's how we try to you know push you uh, we will give you the the all the all, all the stints that's that's required for you to excel at the interview after the course is done we will put you through lots and lots of interviews like me i would come up and ask you questions on how a real interview happens uh, shiva would you know uh, would take another session kalyan would take another session you know santosh uh, something in his own his space would ask you questions and that is where you, it would happen for you know 
in iterations is how it would happen uh, several days several weeks and that is where when 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 we believe you're done is where we will push you uh, to the next level and we are 100% sure like you you trust us and that's how we we build our career and uh, that's where people are not doing the right way and i believe that we all believe this is the right way to go and uh, with the initial conversations that we had with the colleagues in india they they trust us and they say you know bring bring the right candidates we will give it a try uh, so i think i answered uh, enough for the placement so multiple streams uh, when you say multiple streams can you a little bit elaborate on that narish is it is it beyond uh, other than statistical programming uh, it means like multiple streams in the sense like currently we have the sdm programmer add tlf even the stat right, right 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 different streams right. so we i guess in the i get that you like I management so, right 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 so so i get your question so basically when you when you sit through the entire 6 to 8 months of course uh if you're starting from you know learning sas definitely there's 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 something that you would develop over time saying okay this is the area where i'm interested in so that is where we will focus on let's say you 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 once once you have some exposure with kalyan on how a real world evidence study is conducted and let's say you start to uh, develop more curiosity towards it to and you want to excel in that space we will push you towards you know while while having those interview sessions we will we will push you towards you know uh, gaining more knowledge in that area uh whether it's standards like it's coming to standards like you complete the entire project santosh will chime in santosh will come in and he will you know walk you through he will deep dive more into that that area you know how how was what's what's the necessity of standards what are the different therapeutic areas that you need to know about um at least the minimum that you need to know about with specific to standards you know he would he would he would fill that space he would fill that gap and then uh, you can project yourself in your resume the way you build your resume you could say you know you know more about this you know this this is what will create interest in uh, in in people who who kind of read your uh, cv uh, you know where are you where are, where are your interests where are your specialized skills so that is where we will again help you towards as as again i told you this is not like a regular institute that you're looking at uh, um, in 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 india especially we want to project ourselves totally different uh, we will do the way uh, the right way uh, and uh, we believe we will succeed yeah and we will help you succeed basically uh, naresh is that enough or do you have uh, any any yep, 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 follow follow up um, questions yep. no 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 like uh, there is a one question like i hope we have answered all those things but i would like to um, share the question with the, all the panel and team uh, what kind of uh, company you are like i when we compare to regular trainings we receive in online or uh, basically in hyderabad uh, the amir pet so i hope we have answered all the questions to uh, mainly to this question especially so that's it friend like uh, just one more thing like i would like to thank chaitanya and navya like in the back end they worked a lot in supporting for the uh, wonderful yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. really appreciate really appreciate your efforts chaitanya and navya thank you so much for all the support and uh, looking forward to you know working with you uh, down the line uh, and uh, to answer your question arish i think we are not like a regular institute it's it's we, we are not an institute we are an organization uh, we are a technology based uh, organization we have plans to evolve in the future in terms of tool development uh, it we are not going to stop at you know it's it's not just a, a training institute like others we all come from Uh, uh at least more than a decade of background in this area we have seen the pain points um we know what needs to be developed we know what areas needs to be focused on uh so we we are looking big we, we i mean we are looking into the future we have a bigger vision uh, is what i'm trying to say beyond uh this this particular training um 
we we want to call ourselves more of corporate trainers rather than you know any tom dick or harry institutes that you see around uh, without you know naming uh, any of them uh, and uh, yeah i think i think uh, i'd like to you know ask every each one of you to put a word there uh, uh, santosh kalyan shiva just one word uh, on how you think we should differentiate differentiate ourselves uh, and what uh, are we thing is that uh, see uh, in in training institute it is not something like uh, we just uh, uh, go like a Uh, teach something uh, right and uh, like give like documents it's a uh, completely different uh, completely uh, different in the sense like uh, we provide data and uh, we ask them uh, ask you to work on it and show your progress so once you assign the work you have to complete that's your job so it's not like uh, we sit next to you and try but you have to try yourself then only you understand like uh, how it looks. you can ask as many as questions but the thing is that completing job is uh, the the work that's required so as much as as long as you commit to your uh, commitment then we are here to help you so that's how we different and uh, for that to facilitate that we can provide uh, whatever the uh, required uh, things like they uh, are or specification how we uh, in the real world uh, environment like how it will be we provide that environment uh, in it, it make sure that you will get that exposure and uh, get experience so that's how we different yeah and also think like um, uh, no not as we are not here as teachers or trainers you think of us like a mentors no um all of my experience so far in the industry now uh, um i have been mentored so many candidates you know who came from entry level programmers i've seen them grown very well in their career you now to managers you now to us uh, to senior manager levels um so i think i mean we are here here to share the real experience yeah. not just book book knowledge or any like online trainings here to share you real knowledge real experience show you the real time examples um if you bring any question like a single question to us we can give you an advice on how to look into that single question in different different ways based on our experience you know so i think you are mute and you are mute pravin yeah. so um... So oh, I would yeah I was just asking um, Kalyan yeah yeah I would pretty much say the same like you know you'll uh what you'll what you'll get as I earlier also said what you'll be getting over here is based on our experience um uh, from uh, from the from our from our like from our day to day experiences with uh and from our experience with in this industry for several years. so that is the experience we are going to give you and uh, and the the examples as uh, as santosh put in will be from our like you know from our from our experience from our experience working on different studies working in this industry that is what we'll be we'll be giving out to you over here and uh, and as i said the the curiosity lies in like you know earlier uh, uh sunil was saying the curiosity would lie in you how you how how you want to learn how uh, how you want to what kind of questions you want to pose what you can best extract out of us that will lie with you uh, that's where i would like to uh point out that you know um as as he said the as shiva was telling um uh, you know the training part will be on us but how curious you are how you motivated you are how um how what kind of questions that you bring to the table how much effort uh, how much self motivated motivated you guys are that lies with you probably muted and mute drawing oh yeah yeah sorry 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 uh, wonderful wonderful time uh, great discussion thank you all for your time really appreciate i'm so thankful to kalyan uh, santosh especially shiva uh, and then also uh, naresh and your team uh, 
please one more time i i again let me note down the names uh, why don't you uh, give me the names of uh, your team members navesh chaitanya navya and vishwatiya yeah, thank you so much chaitanya okay thank you so much chaitanya navya and vishwateja for uh, you know uh, coordinating and uh, really appreciate uh, santo uh, shiva you want to say anything uh we can, yeah, we can like close to this session thank everyone and... uh, making time uh, morning and uh, appreciate your time here uh, and hope uh, this session help you to understand the industry so if you had some uh, if you added some uh, value to your uh, understanding that will be great uh, success so hope uh, we'll uh, see how uh, if you are in, uh, if you have any more questions you can reach out to uh, naresh or we can uh, mm-hmm. get back to us so we can uh, try to answer uh, and clear your any uh, other questions and uh, uh, yeah, that uh, that should be all from my end and uh, uh, and again once again thank you everyone uh, and also yeah, yeah. thank you family. thank you so much and then yeah i'm looking forward Santosh, to you know, uh, connecting also, with you all kalyan thank you so much for your time uh, i know like tomorrow everybody has a working day <laughs> so it will be late uh, thank you so much thank yeah, you yeah. thank, thank you, you so much, much. Thank thank you. signing off yeah and then uh, yeah looking forward to meeting you all again yeah bye bye okay. bye see you all.